Hello SRL, Matt here, your Student Reporting Labs producer. Today, we're going to look at my list of 10 steps of how to export and upload to the FTP. I will be using iMovie, Final Cut 7, and Adobe Premiere CC. If you're using Final Cut X or 10, a lot of the same process that we use in iMovie will be used in Final Cut 10. Step 1, make sure your timeline is nice and clean. We don't want any lingering footage on the tail end. This is a good timeline, nice and clean, and nothing at the end. You can always hit Shift-Z in any of three programs to show if everything on the timeline. Also, please remove all your lower thirds. We will add those ourselves. Step two, let's add our slate and our handles. Simply grab your clip and move it down one second. On the tail end, please add five seconds. Just like so. No fades, just the clip. Now, go ahead and find your slate. It should have your name, the student producer's name, the school, and the total running time. This helps me later on for organization. Simply click and drag in there. And make sure you insert and you don't overwrite. Remember, we want that one second. So it should go slate, one second of extra with no sound, and then five seconds at the end with no sound. Let's see step two in Adobe Premiere. Grab that handle on the top and drag it out one second. Go to the tail end and drag it out five seconds. You can see the time extend there and the duration. Exactly five seconds. And no audio, please. Again, this program as well does Shift Z. You see the whole timeline? There's nothing at the end. If you need to add a title in Adobe Premiere, go to Title on the top of the screen, New Title, and Default Still. Again, the same rules apply. Name of the student producer, name of school, and total running time. Now let's see step two in iMovie. Again, grab this and drag it out by the seconds. It's very easy in iMovie. And grab your tail and grab it out five seconds for me. Just like so. If the audio is attached, that's no big deal. I can remove that. Again, your titles will be here in the left-hand corner. Simply select your standard and follow the same rules. Step three, let's check our export settings by checking our sequence settings. Simply go up here to sequence and hit sequence settings. Make sure your sequence is selected. Check if it's an H.264 or an Apple ProRes. Those seem to be my favorite to work with. If you do have XD Cam, feel free to use that, but make sure it's XD Cam HD 422. We also want to make sure that we're not using 1080i50 or 1080i25. That's PAL. That's in Europe. Here in the United States, we use NTSC. So make sure that you're using those. Also, because we're going, we're going on broadcast, we generally like to use 1080p 30 frames or 60i, one of the two. We can work with both. So now that we have our H.264 setting and we're happy with our frame size, 1280 by 720, this is good if we're going online. Remember, if we're going on broadcast, we want to make sure that it's 1080. We can always upscale if you've recorded in 720p. Hit OK. Now, let's check that in Premiere. Again, make sure your timeline is selected, sequence, sequence settings, and check your edit mode. And now all the presets that Final Cut has are loaded in Adobe Premiere. But look, we still have the 422, which again, is one of my favorites. iMovie's a little different. Let's check it out. In the other programs, we have a file export, but we don't have that here. We have a share function. Again, it's easy. Just go to share file. Now, if you're using this video and you're gonna be putting it on YouTube or Vimeo, it's simple. It already has a preloaded preset. Very simple. You can even add your account here. No problem, you just hit sign in and fill out the existing information. But for us, try to export as a file. Here, you can designate what you want. You can even name, you can even label it. This will export it as a .mov. Step four, now that we've verified our timeline settings, let's check our audio. One of the things I like to do is I like to make sure that my audio is separated by layers, almost like a checkerboard. You see this? This, on the top level, is my VO and my SOTs. SOTs are also known as interviews. 
On the bottom is my NAT sound, or music bed. These can be centered. When we do this and we export, this, this means I have full control over both audio levels when we go to mix. This helps later on when we, when we are balancing levels. Again, we can do this in Premiere. It's the same thing. The timelines look the same. Again, layered with VO and interviews in the top and music and sound bed on the bottom. Now, sometimes Premiere can be a little tricky. If you're having audio issues, simply right click and use your audio channels here. Just make sure that everything is in the same line. Let's check this out in iMovie. It's a little easier, actually. See, here in the timeline, the audio is already built into the primary clip. So say, for instance, this is your VO or your SOT, it's already kind of built in there. If you need to drag an additional audio, simply just click here, drag, and bring it down to the second level. You can even add a music bed here. Now, let's export back to Final Cut. It's very easy in Final Cut. Command E. Make sure you label your sequence. Use the same thing that we use for the slate. Also, you don't have to mess with this if your timeline settings are already the same. So again, File, Export, QuickTime Movie. We're not doing any kind of compression, so we don't need to use a conversion. When we export, now that we have our timeline the where we want it, with audio mixed properly, and the video where we want it, go ahead and set your export settings. Let's check that out in Premiere. File, Export, Media. We're obviously not doing any of these other ones, so Media. I like Premiere because it gives you a whole new protocol of what to use. You can set your settings here. QuickTime Movie is what we're looking for. Then we have right there, perfect, Apple ProRes. If you don't have that, feel free to use 1080i. It will automatically set your different codecs here. This is where you can select if you want an H.264, if we're going online, or again, we're doing an Apple ProRes 422.mov. Now, we've already showed you how to do a Nine movie, but I'll do a quick refresher. It's really simple. File, share. And look, we could have email, iTunes, YouTube, whatever we want. But again, try doing the file. And then make sure you label it. Obviously, 1080p, 1080i, and we can hit next. Choose where you want it. That's fine. And there it goes. You can watch the progress here. Now, it's going to take a while. So that's why step six is wait. Step seven, visit the FTP at this address. Use the login student reporting labs and password news hour. Please leave this as default. Hit OK continue. Step eight, use student reporting labs and navigate to the correct folder. Say, say for instance, we're using, we're uploading to the rapid response. Please select the right year and the right folder. Right now we're working on rapid response for Ferguson. So this is where you would upload your video. Step nine, hit upload. Make sure you hit choose file. Some schools are having problems with their educational firewalls. Please contact your, your IT administrator or simply use YouTube. When you upload to YouTube, please make sure that you're making the video unlisted. I can rip from there. Back to the FTP. Make sure you hit choose file. Then we can click anything we want, but make sure we navigate to right with where we exported that correct video. We can grab this and hit choose. Then you simply hit upload. Now, depending on your internet speed, this could take a while, but the FTP is pretty quick. Step 10, please include a Word doc or a text edit doc that has all of your lower third information spelled correctly. From here, we will create the correct lower thirds. That's how easy it is to export and upload to our FTP. Please, if you're confused or have any questions about any part of this video, please contact me. I will answer any of your questions via email or phone. Also, stay tuned for our videos on quality control standards for student reporting labs and also the tips and tricks that I have to offer. Thanks for watching.